Hey, what's up? Welcome to the second part of the audio tutorials about compression that I'm doing here on YouTube. If you've missed part one, be sure to check it out right here. In part one, I've uh, explained what the, the, the common functions of compressors are, like uh, setting up the threshold and the ratio, the attack time, the release time, and the makeup gain. And now we're gonna look at settings and we're gonna look at different techniques, like uh, New York drum compression and sidechain compression. So how are compressors generally used? Um, normally they're used as inserts on your multi-track recording, meaning it will just affect one sound of your whole mix. Uh, take an example where we have a band recording and we want to dynamically control the kick drum and we want to dynamically control the snare drum and the bass line and the vocal, uh, but they all need to have different settings, so we insert them on each respective channel. But compressors can also be used on the output of a group track, uh, controlling the dynamics of a whole group of drums perhaps, and they're also used during mastering on the whole mix. This is a small promotion. If you want to know more about insert effects, auxiliary effects, or uh, mixing consoles in general, please check out my other videos and uh, subscribe to my channel for more stuff. A question, uh, a question I get a lot is, uh, what is the best compressor setting for my compressor? Or uh, can I get a preset for this vocal track or something similar? Um, which is really impossible because a compressor needs to be set uh, according to the sound that you want to achieve on that moment for that mix on that project. So it's, uh, it's really hard to say like, if you compress it like that, it will be good because it's really depending on the mix that you already have and the mix that you put it in. Uh, so it's, 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 it's hard to say that. I've got a couple of guidelines that you can work with, but uh, it's a starting point and uh, it's, not a, it's not a success guaranteed formula or whatever. The basic idea is that you set up the compressor different for sustained sounds as for transient sounds. So uh, here's a little bit of a list of uh, instruments and elements and uh, corresponding settings. But always keep in mind that these are guidelines and, uh, and maybe you have to tweak a little bit of the settings to, to get the sound that you're looking for. Uh, one function I haven't mentioned earlier is the knee setting that certain compressors have. Uh, a knee setting allows you to uh, choose between soft knee and hard knee, and sometimes they even have a slider for uh, between soft and hard knee. And the difference between them is that soft knee actually applies an increasing ratio which uh, works a little bit before the threshold, so uh, it gently applies the compression. When you have a compressor with a hard knee function, it means that whenever you reach the threshold, it really applies the ratio the way that you've set it, instead of uh, the soft knee which gently applies it and smooths out the effect of compression taking place. So the hard knee definitely will be more noticeable of an effect and uh, when it takes place you can really hear the compressor start to work uh, as opposed to soft knee where it gently uh, increases the amount of compression. A nice compression trick is the New York drum technique or the New York drum compression or New York compression or parallel compression or whatever the you call it. And the New York drum technique uh, uses a compressor and a dry signal at the same time. So here we combine uh, the original drum track with the heavily compressed drums to actually give it more body. So uh, now we're gonna listen to the original drums first, then we're gonna listen to the compressed track, and then we're gonna listen to the combination or the New York drum track. One thing I haven't, uh, haven't covered yet is a so-called sidechain or key input and that is used to control the compressor with a different signal. So this is something uh, completely different and uh, I'll show you some examples and uh, what it's used for and how it can be used. So the basic idea that I'm showing you here is that we have a music track and we have a voiceover track and the thing is that we want is when the voiceover speaks is that we want the music to get softer because we don't want it to interrupt with the voice. So what we use is that we use a compressor with uh, the vocal sent to a key input on that compressor. So this is my voice uh, when it's not compressing the, the music and this is my voice sent to the key input of the compressor on the track making it almost behave like the fader on a mixer. So as you could hear, the, the vocals really pushed away the, the music in, the, in this example, and it really gave it that compressed, pumpy sound to it, like that, almost that radio voiceover sound. 
So there's a lot possible with compression and uh, there's definitely a lot to it. Um, in part three of this tutorial series, we're gonna look at different compressor plugins and really gonna listen to the distinct differences in sound that they have. So be sure to check out part three down here and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more cool stuff.